seconds to go. Start. PW25 gave treatment to the deceased at about 5 5 pm. He died of multiple injuries caused by hemorrhage at about 5 45 pm. The case sheet indicates that the deceased was allegedly attacked by two known persons, namely the accused. About 40 days thereafter, that is 3rd December 2001. At the request of the police, PW25 gave another certificate introducing adequate material to indicate that there was a dying declaration. In the meanwhile, PW1 went to the police station for the second time and gave a complaint which was registered by PW28 at about 6 pm. PW28 is the investigating officer who did his part by completing it and filed the final report with the major offences being section 302, section 506b and section 120b read with section 34 of Indian Penal Code. Before the trial court, the prosecution examined as many as 28 witnesses and marked exhibit P1 to P60. Material objects are marked as MO1 to MO17. On behalf of the defense, a doctor was examined to show that considering the nature of the injuries suffered, the death must have been instantaneous. Certain portions of section 161 of the Code of Criminal Procedure 1973 hereinafter referred to as CRPC statements given by the prosecution witnesses have been marked to contradict their deposition before the court. The court of sessions without exception threadbare considered all the materials including the witnesses who turned hostile. Most of the witnesses pertaining to conspiracy occurrence recovery and extraordinary judicial confession turned hostile. After due scrutiny, benefit of doubt was extended in favor of the appellants. The state took the case on appeal before the High Court. The High Court did not consider the entire evidence as discussed by the trial court. Nonetheless, it reversed the order of acquittal on the following grounds. The trial court had no idea of the concept of dying declaration and the principle governing it. The testimony of PWs 3, 4 and 5 ought to be read in unison and in conjunction with each other to come to an in inference of motive. The testimony of PWs 1, 2 and 25 ought to have been accepted. The contradictions between the testimony of PW2 and the statement under section 161 CRPC would only mean that the investigating officer was leaning towards the accused. The medical evidence along with the documents marked clearly point out the guilt towards the accused. The fact that the witnesses turned hostile including the punch witness who signed the recovery memos would not be fatal to the case of the prosecution. Accordingly, the judgment of the trial court was reversed and conviction was rendered sentencing the appellants for life. The learned counsel appearing for the appellants submitted that it is not probable that PW1 could have been present on that day as a chance witness. He was having a grudge against the accused. At their instance, he was facing departmental proceedings. The trial court has considered the evidence thoroughly. It found that PW1 could not have been a chance witness and there are many discrepancies in his evidence and the testimony of PW2. He did not use his wireless radio nor make any attempt immediately to give her complaint. He did not accompany the deceased as reiterated by PW2 being contradictory to that of exhibit P41 read with the evidence of 
PW25, it is inexplicable that the deceased would be taken to the hospital 2 kilometers away while leaving the one on the road just about 50 meters away, especially taking note of the serious condition of the deceased. It is further submitted that PW2's evidence was rightly disbelieved by the trial court in view of the contradictions in the evidence adduced by him and PW1 and also PW16. He also did not give a complaint despite being a police officer. The trial court rightly noted that it would be unsafe to rely upon the evidence of PW1 and PW2. The recovery shown also belies the case as put up by PW2 with respect to an attempt to attack him by throwing one of the material objects at him. Stoke. 